Hello and welcome to a little video about comparing exponential and linear functions. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on here. The first thing that we're going to do is determine whether the two tables we have in front of us are linear, exponential, or possibly neither. And if we can, let's fill out the missing values. All right, let's zoom in. The first thing I like to test is whether or not it's a linear function. I think that's the easiest thing to test because what we're looking for is a rate of change which is the change in y's over the change in x's. If it's constant throughout the whole table, that means it's a linear function. So let's give that a shot. From 5 to 15, we go plus 10. 0 to 1, plus 1. So 10 over 1. That's our first rate of change. Let's see our second rate of change. 15, uh, to get to 15 to 45, plus 30, and I stop right there. 30 is not the same thing as 10, right? It's not constant. It's definitely not linear. So farewell. Okay, now let's see whether or not it's exponential. I'm going to zoom out a little bit now because I need a little bit more space to write. Recall that our exponential function is y equals a times b to the x. a is our initial value. Now this table actually gives us our initial value. Remember the y-intercept? The y-intercept is our starting point. Starting point is the same thing as our initial value. Check it out. There it is. We have a already. Perfect. y equals 5 times b to the x. Okay, that's kind of helpful. Now, I'm going to plug in another x and y into the equation and see whether or not that helps me solve it. I'm going to choose with the next smallest one, so 1 and 15. So I'm going to plug in 1 and 15 over here. Let's give it a shot. y equal, did I, <laughs> okay, we'll ignore that, <laughs> 15 equals 5 times b to the power of 1. Okay. So if this was a normal equation, well, I guess it kind of is a normal equation, I have multiplication, I'm going to divide to see what b to the power of 1 should be. So 15 divided by 5 is 3, is b to the power of 1. Okay, can you think of a number that if I raise to the power of 1 gives me 3? Oh well, yeah, 3. So b is 3. Perfect. I am going to make this smaller before we continue. Wish me luck. Oh, wow, I did it. No, nope, I didn't. Uh, I'm going to try one more time before I give up. All right, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. Noise. Okay. Now, according to this, our equation is y equals 5 times 3 to the power of x. Just in case, I'm going to make sure it works here, okay, for the 2 and 45. I'm going to zoom in. So let's see. If I plug 45 in for y and 2 in for x, will this be true? 3 to the power of 2 is 9. Does 5 times 9 equal 45? It sure does. Perfect. We have the right equation. That means we can fill, whoa, <laughs> means we could fill these two in. So let's do it. Okay, first I'd like to solve three. Okay, so five times three to the power of three. Three to the power of three is 27, which gives us an answer of uh, one, three, five. Now I'm writing that in the table. Okay, whoops, didn't mean to scroll down that much. The next one we have y equals 5 times 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is 81, so this is 405. This is an exponential function. Perfect. Hey, not too crazy, but not as easy as linear. Okay, let's look at the second table. I'm going to start off again with our constant rate of change. Well, 
to check if there's a constant rate of change. Excuse me. All right. From 67.2 to 63.1, I had to subtract 4.1 to get there and add 1. Okay, so negative 4.1 over 1. Let's see. To get from 63.1 to 59, I would also have to subtract 4.1 to get from 1 to 2, also plus 1. So far, so good, but we do have one more value. We need to check it before we say anything or try to fill in, okay? From 59 to 54.9, same thing, minus 4.1. Perfect, perfect, and plus 1. So, let's fill this value in. 54.9 minus 4.1 is 50.8. And, of course, this is still plus 1. All right, sweet. This was a linear one. How would we know if it's neither? You wouldn't be able to find anything for here, for B. It wouldn't work. It would be something preposterous. And um, wouldn't have a constant rate of change? Then you would say neither. Eventually, you'll learn how to tell if it's quadratic or cubic. At the time being, that's not important for us. Okay. Well, let us continue. All right. Does this situation describe linear or exponential situation? I wrote situation twice. Okie dokie. Every 20 years, the population of mosquitoes in Neverland declines. Lucky, lucky Neverland. Each 20 years, there is a third of the population from the previous 20 years. Okay, so is this linear or exponential? Now, what words give it away for me are going to be um, eh, not every, it's going to be a third. This is what gives it away, a third. So, 1 over 3. Right? That's what a third is. Remind yourself, what does 1 over 3 really mean? It's, it's division. Right? Fractions represent division. So every 20 years, we divide the population by 3. There's only one third left. Our exponential functions, will they look like that? And the answer is no, because third isn't an exponential word. It's a division word. So really, this would have something like one third of the population, one third p. So that's not, that's not a power. That's just a division. I hope that makes sense. But when it comes down to it, the most important part is this a third. The third tells me it's a fraction. Fractions tell me division. Division is not exponents. It's just division. Okay. Next. How is a growth function? Here it is different from a positive linear function. Okay, couple of things. Well, first of all, a positive uh, growth function looks like that, right? And a linear function looks like this. So what I see is that x is going to, not x, I'm sorry, the, the y's are going to increase. There, I just got a little distracted. I'm still distracted. Get your thoughts together, Ms. Gooman. <clears throat> okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. So the growth function and the positive linear function are both getting larger, which is you know, the point of a positive function and a growth function. However, growth functions, as we go to the right, as the x's increase, the y's are going to increase so fast. As for our line, they increase at a very steady pace. I know the exponential uh, function I drew is just a little curve, but imagine that this curve got larger. It just gets steep like that. It just looked kind of ugly, so I didn't really want to draw it. All right. All right, same question for a decay function. How is it different than a negative function? Well, let's take a look. A decay function looks like this. And a negative linear function looks 
like that. Again, we are getting smaller so much faster than the negative linear function. So x is getting smaller and, sorry, not the x's, the x's are getting bigger because we're going to the right, but the y's are getting smaller. But, and they're getting smaller way faster than a line. In a line, constant rate of change, they're getting smaller in a constant pace. I feel like I repeated myself a bunch, but uh, I maybe that's for, for good. All right, let's take a look at this very last one. I'm having a hard Monday today. Um, it's Monday for me, guys. I, I hope you're having a good day today. All right. Growth of the exponential functions happen when b is greater than 1. Okay, we learned that in the previous section. Decay happens when b is less is greater than 0 or equal to 0, but greater than 1. But they never equal to 1. Why not? Greater than or equal to. I definitely typed that wrong. That's why I was reading it so funny. It can't be 0. That would just be silly. Okay. Has to be greater than 0 and less than 1. So it has to be a fraction. And recall that the other day we talked about the fact that if it's a decay, it, the fact that if we have a negative, it's not a decay function. That negative applies to your initial value. The decay is based strictly on the base, on b. So, y can't be equal 1. I'll give you a quick example. What is 1 to the power of 0? 1. What's 1 to the power of 2? 1. What's 1 to the power of 400? It's 1. Well, what's 1 to the power of negative 1,000? Still 1. So 1 to any power is 1. And no matter what a is, it's just going to multiply by 1. So if a was 5, no matter what we plugged into x, we would always get 5 for y. We'd actually just get a horizontal line if b was equal to 1, um, which is not an exponential function. Okay. So this was a little bit more abstract than usual, right? Um, I hope it made sense. If you have any further questions or would like me to repeat anything about any of these problems, maybe post some more examples, let me know um, and I will do so. Have a wonderful rest of whatever time of day it is for you. Bye.